anyone who blocks my path. The blood that flows through her veins is special. And extremely dangerous. If showing pity would put my allies in danger, I will not hesitate to kill her. Hey there everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Obviously, last episode was the episode where Geralt died. Um, wow, I hadn't actually realized the similarities between him and the Witcher's name. Like, they're spelled different, but they're pronounced almost identically. Uh, the Witcher was not as big a thing when I played through this the first time. Hmm? Are you still crying? If turning back the hands of time was not enough to save his life, you must accept what came to pass was fate. Agreed. We cannot let the wicked ones run free. And we won't. Oh, your father said to look for something here. He must have been referring to whatever is behind that bookcase there. I love how she's just oh yeah, here's the secret. I was like, I wanted to find it. Your father's diary. Huh. His handwriting is prettier than his face was. God suggest. damn it, Sophis! I've forgotten about that line. Well, well. These entries here are from before your birth. He seems to have been writing this for quite some time. Hmm? Oh. Read that part there. Horsebow Moon. Year 1159. Day 20 of the Horsebow Moon. All is cloudy. I can't believe she's dead. Yeah, that's right after Mom died. Lady Rhea said she died during childbirth. But is that the truth? I forgot about that too. The like the suspicion of you know what happened to his wife being more than what Rhea said it was. Because if that's the case, then that also explains even more why he ran off with me. But still, the child she traded her life for doesn't make a sound. Didn't even cry at birth. Day 25 of the Horsebow Moon. It's raining. The baby doesn't laugh or cry. Not ever. Lady Rhea says not to worry about a baby that doesn't cry. It isn't natural. I had a doctor examine the child in secret. He said the pulse is normal, but there's no heartbeat. No heartbeat? I, it is interesting. It, it really... I wish we had, like, had a chance to know Gerald better. Because... To a certain, I think I, I think I said this before. It's always hard for me to remember what I've already commented on because it's been so long since I was in this section last time. But you you have to figure that he wa walked around very 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 frustrated with uh, the child because he has to associate the child with the death of his wife, and the child is like some sort of monstrosity. Day two of the Wyvern Moon, Sunny. I feel I must take the child and leave. But the church is always watching us. I don't know what Lady Rhea has planned. I used to think the world of Lady Rhea. Now I'm terrified of her. Day 8 of the Wyvern Moon. More rain. I used the fire that broke out last night to fake the child's death. Lady Rhea is in a state over the news, but I can't change what I've done. I've got to take the child and leave. I wonder how you... I mean, I guess if I never make a sound, it's relatively easy to hide me, but... Well, now. That baby must be you. That means... Hmm? Someone is approaching us. I bet it's Dimitri. This is one of the things that always bother me the most, because last time we actually gave Claude the diary. And I was like, no, I kind of feel like we should go through the diary. It's like our dad's. There you are. Lady Rhea is looking for you, Professor. And after your audience, why don't you join me at the dining hall? You haven't eaten since... since it happened, have you? Forgive me. I suppose it's too soon to try and coax you back into the normal swing of things. It's... whenever you lose someone, especially someone as close to you as a parent, you don't get back to normal for months. As for what happened to Gerald... I'm so sorry. I mean, to sorry be... Sorry I couldn't do anything to stop it. To be fair, 
Um, and I think I've talked about this before as well. I, I, I'm almost positive that this made me remember these things before. Um, you, to a certain degree, you never get back to normal. You just get back to a state where it doesn't continually affect you. Stay here until you've found some peace. I'll cover for you with Lady Rhea and everyone else. <laughs> if only. No need to put on a brave face. No one would blame you for taking time for yourself. I don't believe it's a sign of strength to just keep moving forward no matter what. Taking the time to grieve for those we've lost? There's strength in that, too. That's what I think, anyway. That said, it's also important to remember that no matter how sad you are, eventually, your tears will dry up. No, they'll just abate. There's a difference. That's when you have to figure out what it is you're living for. Then you can cling to that with all your might and start moving forward again. What am I fighting for? Four years for? ago in Dusker, I experienced the same pain you're feeling now. My father was the strongest man I knew, someone I loved and admired deeply. That day, he was killed before my eyes, his head severed clean off. That is... It's all... I, I can't empathize. My stepmother, Shit. the kindest person I had ever known, left me behind and disappeared into the infernal flames. I can't sympathize with people who have lost someone like that to a violent act in front of them, but it, I think it must be something that just scars you for life. I mean, like, I know... I was... I've been lucky in that the only person truly, truly, truly close to me that I lost was my dad, and he he died after an extended fight and was put into hospice care. So we, you, you knew it was coming. To lose it unexpectedly like that is going to be so much more shattering. Everyone who I considered precious, my family and my closest friends, I couldn't save any of them, not a single one. Now, the burden of the work they left behind falls on me. I must ensure they have no regrets. That's my duty as the sole survivor of the tragedy. It's a heavy burden, but accepting it gave me the strength to pick myself up off the ground and start moving again. Start living again. So, I, I, there is a certain degree of... There, there's, there's a duality to this. Whenever something like this happens, it is very, very important to find something to work towards, otherwise you just wallow in regret forever. But at the same time, you need to also make sure that there are people that, like, a, a good example of that is after someone dies, they will end up, in order to starve off grief, they'll just be like, okay, I'm going to like, really focus on my job. And then they just start putting in, like, enormous 12, 16-hour days endlessly because they don't commit themselves to something that matters. They commit themselves to something to distract them. And that, in the end, is even more harmful. So you need to be careful with that. Gerald is gone. So what will you do now, Professor? What must you do? Man, you're awfully pushy at this. Like, literally, it happened like 20 minutes ago. This is a conversation to happen to have with her after like three weeks have gone by. Look deep in your heart, and I'm certain you'll find the answer there. Indelible and inescapable. <sighs> I've probably bothered you enough for today, but I have just one more thought to leave you with. Even now, Sedith is gathering the knights to begin a full-scale search for the enemy. And they'll, he'll, he'll find them at the end of next month, where we get to... That, that is one of the... And I, I know I'm getting kind of ahead of myself, but that is one of the things that frustrates me a little bit with this game, is the, the whole Cronia thing, like, she's introduced and then killed within a month. And it's just like, you can do so much more with her. Her character design is awesome, but her actual character is lame. It may not be right away, but before long, they will find their trail. Oh, it'll be right away. No matter what happens or what anyone may say, know that I plan to stand by you, Professor, through anything. I love how it's like, no matter what, whatever anyone may say, and I'm like, well, are there going to be a lot of people in the monastery be like, I don't support you trying to avenge your father. I think he deserves it. Like, no, no one's going to say that. Well, 
did you search deep within yourself as he suggested? And did you find yourself some answers? I found you. Does that count? This book is filled with secrets yet unknown. Well, yeah, that's why they're secrets. You must oh. Oops. But I have at least figured one thing out. Um, but we must return another time to read the... Okay. I know now why our fates are intertwined. I still know... Why don't we just take the book with us? And why don't you tell us why our fish You can't just leave it at that. So this you're terrible. Professor, I have been waiting for you. I am filled with grief at the loss of our most celebrated... I don't know, apparently he was terrified of you. Gerald was an ally of many years. And also a dear friend. It was a long while back. At the time, Gerald was a soldier of the kingdom. Interesting she won't give me an actual time frame. He was injured in battle. And I saved him just as he was about to perish. That was our first meeting. Well, I'm dumb. For a split second, my response was, No, G Gerald can't be about to perish. He's immortal. No one can... Wait. After that, he became a knight of Seros. He gave his all in service of the church. He fell in love with one of the nuns here at Garagmark. Their love produced a child whom she died giving birth to. It was her decision. She weighed her own life against that of her child's and, in the end, implored me to save the child. That makes a lot of sense, even though it's still tragic. Your father never truly accepted that decision. He took the child, took you, and disappeared without warning. Your mother, she was my... Yeah, she won't say it. Sorry for the interruption. Of course she won't say it. There's something you must hear immediately. A report from the knights patrolling the area. Very well. Professor? You are dismissed for the day. Please rest and focus only on mending your heart. Understood? Yeah, she needs my heart to be pure because she needs to turn me into a god. Alright. Well, that was very... heavy. I feel like that was a... White clouds. Guardian Moon, where the goddess dwells. I feel like that was a much more emotional scene than we got with the Golden Deer. Long ago, the Guardian Saros made an appearance during this moon. She had been summoned by the goddess, whose soul was suffering as the flames of war raged across Fodlan. Some believe that high in the sky above Saros, the Immaculate Ones, mighty wings are what powered the strong winds carrying the Guardian and her forces. Into and we now know the Immaculate One is Rhea. Because she turns into a dragon later. It's interesting that they put that. I'd completely forgotten they even referenced that in one of the. Because I, I kind of just, like, write that off as folklore and whatever. What are you doing at this hour? Oh, I know. You are eavesdropping. I must admit that I approve. Okay, I don't remember this scene. I mean, obviously I don't. It's Dimitri, but... Professor, we must remain quiet. I see. The Flame Emperor and Monica. And the mage who rescued Monica. Wait, what? I don't know, but if we keep listening, we might be able to find out. An unexpected chance to hear their plans. Patience? Wait, why Patience. is the Flame Emperor just hanging out at Garrick Mach? And Monica, for that reason. Oh, 
Thank you, you saved me! What the actual flying fuck is this? Monica stabs Geralt, and some guy shows up, and they teleport away, and then the next morning, they're just still at Garrig Mach? If you were to die, then the mystery of our bodies would be revealed. Preventing that was my only aim. I'm afraid you must remain, Kranya. There is something I need you to do. Oh, of course. I am always happy to cooperate with Solon. Leave it to me. How annoying. Flame Emperor, is she offending you? Unfortunately, we cannot take our eyes off her, so there is nothing to be done. I... Ah, oh, I can't remember if I still saw the scene before. I might have, but it still seems super out of place and stupid. And I don't remember this being in Golden Deer. You are our greatest creation. We use the defiled beast's blood as the fuel to your flame, that you may burn even the gods. So that is actually a tacit admission that the experiments that they did on Lysithia then were turned and used uh, by, you know, by them in order to artificially give uh, Edelgard the flame crest. Probably so she could... I bet her whole aim was to eventually get the Sword of Creation and be able to wield it, but then I end up with it because I come out of nowhere. We're, we're with an actual flame crest. Now is the time to cleanse Fodlin with that power and bring forth our salvation. There will be no salvation for you and your kind. Those responsible for such gruesome deeds in Dusker and Enmar. All so that you may acquire the strength you need. All for a purpose. Interesting. I think that's also... So we actually now know that those who slither or whatever their name is... Um, are responsible for Dusker. I've got you. Finally. I mean, I don't know. I kind of want to go out there, too. If we don't act now, we'll miss our chance. I agree with Dimitri. <laughs> Even if someone has overheard us, there is nothing they can do. There have always been rats in the walls, and there always will be. Yeah, I don't know why I stopped him. No. The dagger. It's the one that killed your dad, stupid. No, never mind. It couldn't possibly be so. Professor, those are the ones we must destroy. They're the bastards who killed my family and Gerald. For now, let's return to the monastery and regroup. As for the Flame Emperor's dagger, I'll hold on to it for the time being. That doesn't sound morbid at all. Ingrid? Man, I definitely need more Thank you for inviting me. tea. Thank you. I was barely keeping up with all this stuff. How relaxing. Yes. I was gonna say, I don't think she'll like fashion, but I didn't think she'll like any of those. Yes. Everyone always likes talking about themselves. Yes. Okay. I was like, she didn't like fashion. The problem is she does like the romance of, like, nightly stories. Thank you for the... Okay, so we've still got that one, which we've already seen, that one, which we've... Okay, so there are no new paralogs that we need to worry about. That's certainly relevant. Yes. 
any certifications that are she is she's so funny I put her on a path where she can't actually go into an advanced class thankfully she's going to get a master level class in the next mission so it's okay to do is still not level 20 to do All right, you can become a sniper. Go ahead and do that. Good deal, good deal. It's so interesting that becoming a sniper gives him more defense. And I'm like, how does, how does that work? So you've already gone up. Ingrid, you still can't. I think, uh, this is one of the things that's annoying to me, alright? So, the reason she can't is because, like, she's right now a Pegasus Knight, and she's, you know, which is for, like, sword, mounted swordsmanship. The only sword classes here are, like, Swordmaster, Assassin, which needs bow, and then, like, that needs axe, of all things. Like, I could give her writing and make her a paladin, but... It's just, it, it, she's kind of, like, lost in this abyss. But then when she gets up here, Falcon Knight needs sword. <laughs> and so it's just like, I don't understand at all why... Why there's not a in-between class when they've got, when they've got this set up as a path you can follow, but apparently they don't have it set up as a path you can follow, and it's dumb. <laughs> and that's it. Looks like no one else hit twenty. All right. So I don't have anyone, although it does look like there's there's several people already queued up for a rank after the break. All right, there's to do. It looks like let's see, we've got a little bit of time. I don't know that we'll. Oh, well, you know what? We might be able to get through all of them. It's certainly possible. Let's try. Start with Mercedes because we hate her. <laughs> I am so mean to Mercedes, but she so deserves it. You've been spending a lot of time at the training ground, Mercedes. As far as swordsmanship goes, you're like a whole new person. What are you talking about? She can barely hold a sword. Thank you. I have such a great time when you teach me that. Improving comes naturally. It's all because of your own hard work. Compared to you, I... You shouldn't be so disappointed in yourself. You're improving too. You just need to keep at it. Well, I can hold a needle and thread without breaking anything now. That's... something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big step. When we started, you couldn't even hold a pair of scissors without twisting them apart. That surprises me that he's that inelegant. True. I'm sorry for being such a burden. You're no bother at all. I like sewing with you. It reminds me of when I was young and my mother taught me how to sew. Are you calling yourself Dimitri's mother? That's weird. My mother would sit with my brother and me, and we'd all sew together. Oh, I really miss it. Even though I was barely better than you when I started. Wow, no training and she was better than Dimitri. That hurts. Did your mother like to sew, Dimitri? My birth mother? From my father's accounts, she wasn't great at it either. Oh, of course. I forgot that the Queen of Fargus passed away long ago. I was going to say, I, I feel like Dimitri's mom is going to be an awkward, because he keeps talking about his stepmother. I hadn't even really heard of his real mother. Yes. I don't really remember what she was like. But I remember my stepmother, always sitting by the window, sewing away. I'm sure she would have been happy to teach you if you had asked. She always looked so lonely when she was sewing. So unreachable. She was kind to me, yes. But when she was like that, it was hard to talk to her. I'm not certain she would have wished to teach me. Interesting. I wonder if sewing was a certain, like, mental escape. I know a certain, to a certain degree, whenever I go in... There's two... two whenever I draw, I'm in one of two moods. One of them is just a creative, like revelation revelatory mood but some of the other was like that's my way to like block off the world for a second and just focus on other things i'm 
so sorry, Dimitri. I didn't mean to bring up such difficult memories. Don't worry about it. If I don't talk about those things sometimes, I'll risk forgetting them altogether. And that would truly be a shame. That is, have you ever had that experience wherever you're, you know, you, all of a sudden you suddenly remember a song that you loved 10 years ago and you hadn't thought about for years? It, it, those are some of the mo mo my favorite moments in life because suddenly you just like this whole w door opens up and all the stuff that you hadn't th thought about in years comes flooding back. But at the same time, it also worries me because I wonder how many of those doors I just never find again. I see. <laughs> but now I'm just going on and on about myself. Why don't you tell me more about you? More about me? Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to say. Oh, you know, I don't have any real character. I'm really boring. Let's focus on you. It's hard to think of something on the spot, isn't it? You could speak of your family, I suppose. You want to know more about my family? On that topic, I'm happy to oblige. In fact, I'm so glad you asked. It's important to think about your past and share it every now and then. This might take a while, but would you be willing to stay and listen? Stay a while and listen. Of course. I will listen for as long as you wish. Okay, we don't have to listen to her about her family. Alright, and then the other one, because that is not ready. That is not ready yet. Lauren's and Ignatz are both, but Hilda is now at part B. Good morning, Hilda. Is anything troubling you today? Nope, nothing. Not a thing. Stop asking. If there was, I don't think I'd ask for your help. Oh, slap! I'm sorry to hear that. Have I done something to upset you? <sighs> Not exactly. You go overboard helping me is all. You do way, way too much. That is very true. So, I feel guilty. Like, I'm putting you out. Goodness, it was never my intention to have you worry about me. Hmm. Can I ask you something? You just did. Of course. What is it? I should stop saying that, but it's it, every single time someone asks, can they ask something as a question, I immediately I'm just like, Mrr. What are you doing today? Following my morning prayers, I'll be cleaning the altar and caring for the flowers in the greenhouse. Yeah, you, you need a hobby. I think that's why you're so unrelatable to me. Then it's off to the library to help organize and sort, then to the dining hall to wipe down the tables and chairs. The floors could use a good polish, too. Oh, and the weather's so nice that I might air out the bedding. After that, it's... Wow, you're still not done? There's more? Well, the dishcloths in the dining hall are all frayed, so I was hoping to mend them. Sewing? Don't you think that's too much? Whatever do you mean? And why are you speaking so loudly all of a sudden? <laughs> Mercedes, people can't speak loud. I know you can't. I am so mean to Mercedes, I apologize. Ugh, I'll help with the dining hall, but I am not sewing. You want to help? That would be delightful. Everyone asks you for help, and you always say yes, don't you? It's actually really weird for Hilda to, like, volunteer for extra work. I suppose. I believe it's important to help where you can. If you see someone in trouble, you can't leave them, can you? You're too kind, Mercedes. Literally, I can't empathize. This is why Hilda is one of my like. Hilda is one of my favorite characters in this game because she is so different than most other characters you ever see. I'm sure you can. You and I are very similar in that way. Are you serious? How? We have nothing in common. That may be so. <laughs> you thought I was in trouble, and you agreed to help, didn't you? How are we similar? We have nothing in common. Maybe. Well, I mean, yes. That's exactly what I do. I'm so happy to have found a kindred spirit. Uh, if that's what makes you happy, okay. Kindred spirits. Let's go with that. <laughs> now that I've got you at my side, I can take on even more responsibilities. Not a chance. Yeah, she's doing this to try and give you time to do things you like. But apparently, the things that she likes is working. Alright, so I can't actually go with Dimitri or Hilda, because that's both of them. So I guess we will go with... Dudu. I like Dudu. Felix. I like Felix. Ash. 
Oh, interesting, Catherine. Not what I expected to see. Why, Lenato? Oh, hey, Felix. I suppose your thoughts are still with Lord Lenato. That makes sense, although it's interesting how Dimitri was basically like, you need to move on from Geralt 20 minutes after it happened. Meanwhile, Ash is here seven months later. I'm fine. I'm just frustrated by how little I was able to do. I know he was trying to protect me, but Lenato never really told me anything. In the end, I don't think I understood his feelings at all. You said it yourself. Be more moderate in your passions. To me, he always seemed like a knight out of a story. And that made you love him. And I was so caught up in my ideals, I turned a blind eye to his sadness, his hatred, even when they were right in front of me. I guess I'm pretty far from real knighthood, huh? Perhaps. Yet knowing someone well does not mean you know how they feel. That's very true. Felix, you should take that to heart, with considering you and Dimitri. Whether family or friend. It look, it, you're actually taking this the other way, like, I didn't realize he thought this way, but you're still misjudging how he actually felt. To know someone's sorrow and turn blindly from it, that is the act of a fool. But pursuing your ideals is not foolish. But before, you said... I said to be moderate in your passions, not to abandon your ideals. Yeah, moderate does mean you still have them. Just temper them with common sense. It's okay to be who you are. Thank you. Hearing you say that means a lot. Ah, I almost forgot. You lent me this. Oh, the book I lent you. You didn't read it. I'm guessing you hated it? Actually, I already knew the story. My brother used to read it to me all the time. Oh, interesting. Must have dug up some old feelings, then. I suppose. That's just what I'd expect the knight in the story to say. <laughs> God damn it, Ash! It's not just the way you talk, either. It's who you are as a person, deep down. <laughs> well, I think you're like the squire in the book. He's only half a knight, but he's bold and gregarious. Felix is actually going out of his way to be nice. This is unexpected. And he always does his best. Don't stop being that half knight, okay? You got it. I'll become the kind of knight only I can be. That was an awesome scene. Thank you for being... Thank you for being a friend. Here we have a level C one. Hello, Catherine. I thought I might find you here. Is there something I can do for you, Ash? Yes. Could you tell me what you know about this? This is quite an old letter. Where'd you find it? It was found in the bishop's room during the inquiry of the Western Church. Hmm, I see. It's one of the documents you collected. Is this about who she really is? This letter mentions my brother, Christoph Gaspar, by name. Hmm. He was executed by the church for allegedly taking part in the tragedy of Dusker. Is that your real brother or your adopted brother? I know, you were the one who turned him over. But this letter isn't about that. It's about a plot to assassinate Lady Rhea. If my brother's name is in here, that means this plot predates the tragedy. So there was another plot against Lady Rhea in the past, and my brother was somehow involved. Ah. I can tell by your face that you know something. Yeah, it, 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 I don't know what it is, and it may be d difficult, but you should definitely tell him about his own freaking brother. Tell me, Catherine. Please, I deserve to know. Christoph was a good man. Maybe too good. It wasn't in his nature to mistrust people. Wow. Maybe it is. I don't know, because that could also be, like, nurture. Because that sounds like Ash to a T. So when the Western Church told him that Lady Rhea had to die for the goddess's sake, or the world's, he went along with it. Just how well did you know my brother? Christoph and I were friends. We were in the Blue Lion House together at the Academy. If you were friends, why did you hand him over to be executed? There must have been another way. No. If there was another option, I'd have chosen it. I do believe that. But he was foolish. 
He went along with the plan to assassinate Lady Rhea. I wasn't motivated by a personal grudge. I had no choice but to turn him in. That much is true. Kitty, sit. <laughs> I can't believe that my brother would try to assassinate Lady Rhea. I mean, why not? Your adopted dad <laughs> led a rebellion to try and... <laughs> like, what? But if he did, that means the church was lying about his involvement in the tragedy of Dusker, doesn't it? Lying is a strong word. The world was in chaos, and the church did what it had to. If people had known about the threat to Lady Rhea's life, the panic would only have worsened. So you're saying everything in this letter is true. You can choose what to believe. All I know is I let him die, and that's something I can never change. Now, if you'll excuse me. That's interesting. I actually want to pursue that relationship to find out more about Ash's brother. That's This is actually one of the most interesting and noteworthy C-ranked exchanges we've had. Catherine, wait! Please! Nope, you have to wait until B. All right. Is that the only? Yeah, that's the only Catherine, which means we go to Felix. Because we always try and follow the same people around. We couldn't do it before because both Dimitri and um, Hilda only had the one connection. But Felix has a second one that we can follow. All of these. It's interesting that that one still isn't available, even though it's a B rank. I wonder what it's waiting on. All right, you've got Lysethia. More about sweets. are the moments I live for. So interesting to see her. Like, Felix is the only one that has her acting childlike in these. I don't understand you. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Trust me. I didn't mean to interrupt. So how did you like the cake? I bet you ate it, didn't you? I knew it was irresistible. <laughs> what was the experience like? I'm curious from a research perspective. I don't know. I didn't eat it. I gave it to some kid. You gave it to some undeserving child? <laughs> We've been over this. I don't like sweets. Cake is not a sweet. Cake is the divine <laughs> essence of the heavens. Everyone has their own tastes. That's true. But life without cake is no life at all. God damn it. Lysithia is going to make me go to freaking like the store and buy cake. Your dismissiveness regarding cake is inexcusable. I'm not sure why you're so fixated on this. I simply can't resist the spongy magnificence of cakes. I don't understand how you can be so dispassionate about it. I don't know. I just don't like it. Just try a bite. Come on, open up. <laughs> no, I already told you I don't want it. But I made this one, with care and attention, love even. Uh, and I went light on the sugar, just for you. Wait, you made cake for him, even though you didn't know you'd run into him? I've, I call bullshit. Not light enough, I bet. If I eat this, will you stop bothering me? More or less. Just don't give it to some silly child this time. Good Raphael. Let's get this over with. All right, and that no, it was not life as the life as the only one, so we can follow it to Sylvain. We're branching out, guys. This I'm curious what it's going to look like. I have to say, you're really impressive. I respect you a lot, and I thought I should tell you. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's just you know you're four years younger than me, but you work really hard at everything. I mean, when I was your age, I wasted all my time just goofing off and doing whatever I wanted. Doesn't look like much has changed for you since then. I mean, he doesn't waste all his time. And unlike you, I don't have time to waste, so leave me be. Are you going to do some extra magic training? I'd be happy to join you, if you don't mind. Interesting, this is a very strange approach from Sylvain. What do you want to start with? I am absolutely disinterested in spending any time with you. Dang, I mean, this is what Lysethia is, though. What is it you want, anyway? Clearly, you haven't been listening to a word I've been saying. Perhaps
Perhaps it's because I'm younger. You see fit to ignore me when I speak. Is that it? There's Melissa where everything she makes everything about age. What? No. Age has nothing to do with it. I ignore all the women. You're amazing. You're true to yourself. You know what you want and who you are. Not a lot of girls I know can say that. Ah. Oh, so it isn't my age that's to blame for you breezing over my wishes. It's my gender. I... What? Where did you get that idea? I'm just trying to praise your smarts and hard work and everything. It's impressive how someone so young... <laughs> your lack of self-awareness is deeply troubling. What I'm aware of is you trying to pick a fight. Calm down, kiddo. Dude, do not call... <sighs> Sylvain. Look, I'm really busy. Super, extremely, inordinately busy. I've got one last thing to say to you. And what would that be? Bye. I'm skilled with magic, and my abilities are finely honed. It's not like I need someone for target practice. No, but I do. That was a very odd one that was not very satisfying at all, and plain and to do. Not... How the hell has to do and Dimitri not gotten to level B yet? That's weird. Chop the vegetables into bite-sized pieces. After that, skim the top layer off the pan. Be mindful of the heat. <sighs> Certainly, Chef Dudu. There is no need to call me that. Are you displeased? N no, not in the slightest. I just got momentarily sleepy. It happens to me from time to time. Interesting. Let me see. First, chop the vegetables. Coming right up, Chef... Uh, did you? Good. For a split second, I thought that was the whole scene. I'm like, what? I'm so bored. Day in and day out, it is nothing but dicing vegetables and waiting for water to boil. I want to feel like I am actually cooking. It is not as though I do not know the basics. He could at least let me hold the spatula sometime. Next, we peel the vegetables. Chef Dudu, I was hoping to speak with you regarding something. Good, I'm glad you didn't mind. just hide it and wait and fume. Speak? Surely you have noticed my skill while wielding pans and knives. Therefore, I think it is time you taught me how to cook. Beyond all this water boiling and vegetable chopping business. Impossible. <laughs> but why? All must be done in the proper sequence. And the first step here, whether you like it or not, is to learn to use the tools perfectly. Come now! You have seen how I use a ladle! You know I'm good for it! <laughs> <laughs> he has left me no option but to take matters into my own hands. <sighs> Stubborn you may be, Chef Dudu, but I will show you the true meaning of delicious! <laughs> All right, and that takes care of that. My other quest option question, uh, this is a bit late, but I, I just suddenly remembered it, because people were talking about um, that I can probably look to see who I was closest with, but I don't know where I would actually do that. Like, where can you see relationships? Okay, interesting. Apparently it's here. Unfortunately, like, Lawrence, Catherine, and Dorothea are all people that I had, like, maxed out ranks with in the last playthrough. And the, the good news is that it doesn't actually matter, because at the end of the game I could just pick who I end up with. Um, so that doesn't really hurt, but it, it does end up kind of err. Kind of err, that's what I said. This is where, where, where people are like, it's on page two, and I'm like, I didn't even realize there was a page two. Let's get this out of the way so it stops showing up. <sighs> Just look at this place. It's so beautiful, I believe I should take a nap and enjoy it properly. Linhart, lost in thought, I see. Unacceptable. How dare you think? Are you not aware that a noble's duty is to be ever vigilant? Rest increases alertness. 
Is there something I can do for you, Ferdinand? Well, I was just passing by, and I thought I could give you a little advice. Oh, I love little advices. You always seem to be napping. Why not spend your free time doing something productive? Easier said than done, Ferdinand. I'm afraid I suffer from a constitution that tires easily. Hmm. Some training will remedy that. Let us work on that today. I will train you myself. <laughs> I don't think he wants to be trained. I think he rather likes that condition. Arise, Linhart. The righteous path of the noble lies before you. You're always giving it your all, aren't you? Yes, I am. Is there something wrong with that? Of course not. In fact, I rather enjoy your demeanor. You go all out even when others wish you wouldn't. <laughs> you work hard, inspire the admiration of others, and your dignity as a noble is beyond reproach. I consider it my mission to serve as a guide and a model for other members of the nobility. As capable as you are striking, next to you I am a mere infant. Oh, you are far too kind. Although I do work hard each day to achieve all of which you speak. You've mastered all the important noble skills. You drink tea, talk about how what is this? you are, ride horses. Is this a, like, dream that, um, Ferdinand is having where he goes around and everyone talks about how great he is? Indeed. I went for a ride earlier today. Is that so? You'll have to tell me about it sometime when I'm not walking away. Hmm? Where are you going? <laughs> I must get some sleep, being the infant that I am. Farewell for now, Ferdinand. Oh, noble among nobles. Noble among nobles? Seems a bit much. Did he say get some sleep? Hey, wait! Okay, I love that. I may use that line myself. You'll have to tell me about that sometime when I'm not walking away. All right. And with that, let me go ahead and save. I will see you next time. Since there are no, um, like, paral paralog battles that we need to do, I will see you at the end of the month where we get to go up against Kranya. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm.